psychic Irene Hughes launched the unique experiment here recreated for In Search Of. They hired a plane to fly over the waters surrounding Bimini. The purpose of the flight was to gain psychic impressions of the area to help uncover tangible evidence of the existence of an ancient civilization. Now we're not going to tell you where we're going at all. We'll just sort of fly around and if you get a feeling, it'll confirm. Now below us, you can see, is just crystal clear water. Uh, the drop off of the Gulf Stream, 3,000 feet down, from then on east, what do you think? Well, I feel that it is all the way along, like a tunnel, you know, but I feel that we have to make this turn, and as we turn, we're going to see, on the right-hand side, we're going to see some blocks, and on the left-hand side, we're going to begin to see gold color in different spots in the water. And I feel it's right over this way, and we're going to have to go that way and curve right back around that way. The plane crisscrossed the skies for more than two hours. Finally, Irene directed the search to an area where she felt something was buried on the ocean floor. It is a building, and I feel that it is pure marble, the most beautiful marble in the world, similar to that, some of that that was used in the building of the pyramids in Egypt. I feel that it is inhabited by the voices and the images of ancient peoples. The spot selected by Irene became the subject of an extensive search. For two years, divers combed the sea looking for evidence of an ancient civilization. They found the usual array of tropical fish and brilliantly colored coral, but nothing else. Finally, at the foot of a steep cliff, a diver spotted a deeply encrusted object on the ocean floor. What he had found was the base of a marble column. After a series of unsuccessful attempts, divers finally brought to the surface a number of marble slabs, each weighing nearly a ton. The slabs had apparently been part of a much larger structure. Whether they were in the process of being transported and went down in a shipwreck, or had been constructed in an area that was later submerged, is unknown. The Bimini Atlantis connection might have languished had it not been for Raymond Brown, a San Diego physician and adventurer. He believes he has found conclusive links between a Caribbean civilization and those of Egypt and Central America. Dr. Brown's story begins uneventfully on an expedition out of Miami in 1970. Here, recreated, Dr. Brown was headed for an area between Andros Island and the Berry Islands, approximately 100 miles from Bimini. His intention was not to prove or disprove stories about Atlantis, but rather to search for sunken treasure. We'd been searching the area for a number of years for Spanish galleons and had found several and taken some of the uh, treasure and we were very excited when we found this area. They traveled to a spot near the tongue of the ocean. There, the bottom drops to 14,000 feet. Dr. Brown hoped that a recent storm might have shifted bottom sand in order to reveal the galleons. The water was very murky and uh, we didn't get to see all that we would like to have seen, but after the storm uh, moved the sand for us that we'd been digging on for several years unsuccessfully, we found ruins and uh, buildings everywhere. Much of Dr. Brown's photographic equipment was destroyed in the storm, thus making it impossible for a detailed record of the find. We really had no choice because if we had gone back for uh, new equipment that we lost during the storm, if we hadn't got in the water even as murky as it was, we, the sand would have covered the buildings up and we would have lost the view. The ruins of the city Dr. Brown claims he found reflected a sophisticated level of architectural design. 
the buildings had somewhat of an Egyptian or classic look to them. Uh, the ground mass was rippled as though the area had been dropped into the ocean by some sort of cataclysmic action. Then, Dr. Brown reported that he came across the most magnificent find of all. In the murkiness, he spotted the tip of a submerged pyramid, barely visible above the ocean floor. Looking at the structure, shape, and the size, it would be approximately 400 feet tall. Uh, I went in an opening, and in this opening, in the center of the room, there was a pedestal. And on the pedestal were two human hands made of brass or bronze. And in the center of the hands was the crystal. My first uh, impression in the, in the room was the uh, shaft that was metallic, hanging straight down from the ceiling, pointing at the crystal. And it was gold color. I swam, because it was still, the room was full of water, I swam up to the ceiling and tried to pry the uh, rod loose. It wouldn't budge, so I settled back down to the floor. And I reached my hand in between the fingers of the uh, metal hands, and I found the crystal was loose. And it was the only thing in the room that I could take home. The crystal ball seems to possess powers that can repel a coiled stainless steel rod. We found a meter with a one and a half ounce weight, and it becomes sensitive to emanations, uh, particularly magnetic emanations around people or things if they are charged. And we find that if we can hold it straight without uh, allowing it to flip from side to side, some strong influences will actually raise the weight in the air. Now, as we bring something into the field of the crystal, the ions tend to repel if I can keep it balanced and bring it directly into the field and not let it tip from side to side, the weight will then not go to the side if I can keep it centered. And it will, as I come higher, it will raise it and make it weightless and actually float in the air. Some historians say that crystals were the source of Atlantean power. Dr. Brown believes his crystal is evidence that such a culture existed and possessed powers unknown to modern man. Maybe the ancients knew more than we did about uh, life forms and life forces, and we might discover their secret. In the last decade of exploration in the waters off Bimini, new finds cause us to question old theories. Atlantis has long been thought of as a myth a figment of fanciful imagination, a tale told by Plato to amuse ancient Athens. But what of Dr. Brown's crystal? Dr. Marcel Vogel, a researcher at IBM, has devoted more than 20 years of investigation to determine the power of crystals and their effect on human potential. Throughout history, the earliest recorded history we have, there's been a deep respect for the shape of a ball and the use of a quartz crystal ball for probing in the mind of an individual. Now I've worked with Dr. Brown's crystal ball. I used his ball and I felt a tremendous energy burst coming from the crystal. The discovery of the crystal has spawned speculation that possible misuse of its powers by Atlanteans caused the great cataclysm. The island and all its buildings, it is said, were plunged into the sea. The Bimini Wall, therefore, might be the last visible relic of that lost civilization. In Search Of will continue in a moment here on the History Channel. Divers have always searched for hidden treasures of the sea. In the waters off Bimini may lie the clues that not only unlock the mystery of Atlantis, but the secrets of the mind as well. For the present, however, we must content ourselves with the inconclusive bits of evidence so far uncovered. The origin of the Bimini Wall seems destined to remain an enigma 
until more knowledge about